Okay, we're recording. Thanks, Nima, Hi. for doing this. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> so uh, for everybody watching, this is um, a coaching session number one that I'm doing with Nima. He's giving a TEDx talk in Sweden. In, in Delft, Netherlands. Oh, in Delft. I'm back okay. in Netherlands. <laughs> okay. Um, and you are, uh, that's on the 28th of March. 26th of March. The 26th of March. Um, and it's a, what, what is that? It's a TEDx. What is the name of it? Correct. It's TEDx Delft. Okay. Uh, it's also an independent TED event. Uh, it happens in Delft every year. Cool. So it's, uh, uh, that's a, that's not, um, as far as I know, there's like, there's university TEDx's and there's like the regular TEDx's and this would be a regular one, I guess. Um, you're right, because I know that there are some also, let's say, university ones that yeah. are a bit smaller, I think, in some sense, and yeah. they happen in smaller rooms. But this is in the, the largest auditorium, which is also oh. in collaboration with the municipality of Delft. Yeah. Right. Do you know how many attendees are expected? I am not sure, but I think there are around 500 to 600 seats in that room. But wow. I don't know how, if it's going to be full or not. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, so let's hopefully. assume that. Uh, it will be full and uh i actually you know we know each other a little bit but i don't know what your speaking experience is now um t tell me about your speaking experience sure so i i think the largest audience i've ever spoken to was around 300 people and like i was suddenly um invited so, sorry for the noise by the way i was trying to find a private room but unfortunately all the rooms in university were full um, I was suddenly invited to to give a small testimony of my life uh, in front of a crowd, and um, uh, so that, that that was quite sudden. So I wasn't really prepared for it, but that was like a ten minute talk I had uh, to give. But besides that, it's been mostly presentations of uh, maybe ideas or pitching a startup or something in front of a crowd of maybe. 50 to 100 maximum okay. but i've never had this experience for like a large crowd yeah and what is the topic of your talk yeah um so initially it was about uh, using technology for the health of animals uh, especially pets that was what i would uh, it started with in the first three rounds uh, i went with that idea but in the final round they advised me to come up with a different idea and uh, so f finally right now the idea is going to be um, about an e-health platform mm -hmm. an online health platform for uh, the people who travel a lot especially in the eu but hopefully in the future the whole world and in the case of accidents for example if somebody gets run by a car and they're unconscious they're brought to a hospital and nobody knows about their allergies or uh, the other sicknesses, maybe just a fingerprint scanner, a biometric scan would give all the critical information about the person's health. So sort of a universal uh, health platform online. Mm -hmm. And, and I, sorry, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Yeah, uh, and I, after I did some research, I also recently found out that uh, in 2019, one of the top three priorities for the health commission of European Union is such health platform mm -hmm. um, so my idea was considered a lot of more technical details uh, yeah. but since this talk is not going to be a very like technical talk or a startup pitch it's going to be more of spreading an idea okay. um, I'm going to make it less technical hopefully um, and more of the story of my life and why I also care about this thing especially that's good so uh, that we're, we're going to get to that about storytelling and how to do an effective TEDx talk because it's uh, really you have to engage emotionally with the audience but um, tell me more about this health platform is that something that you've kind of designed the platform or what's your what are you from the technical side what, what are you presenting what, what do you want to talk about um, so again, I'm, I'm hopefully not going to make it very technical, but yeah. what the idea that I had was to store the data of the people in a very secure manner, hopefully uh, in a way that is also not replicable or you cannot uh, insert wrong data. So, Okay, so some part of the idea was to use blockchain <laughs> uh, for, for storing the people's data mm -hmm. and um, giving access only to the organization's who could access this and not just everybody, mm -hmm. but also have a version of some of the data in a summarized way on your phone as an app that could be 
uh, inside of the app translated into different languages when you travel to different countries and you can't explain your problem sure. to your general physician. Mm-hmm. But the, the STEM, the original of idea came from my own life situation. Like we had to immigrate from uh, country to country several times. And every time for a lot of problems like health problems, we had to go to the general physician and start the ex- explanation of the history of the sickness from the very beginning mm-hmm. and go there so many different times until they realize, hey, this problem actually is critical. It, yeah. For example, in the case of my mom, that she has asthma. Mm-hmm. So that, that was the reason I wanted to find a solution to this. Okay. And you've, um, you mentioned before you had these different rounds. That, was that, did you have a draft of the whole talk? Um, not written down, but I had like a presentation, like slides. Mm-hmm. And based on those uh, slides presentation, I just gave, gave a picture. Like I prepared in my mind, but I never wrote it down. Yeah, no, that's good because I, I advocate against writing down uh, speeches. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But for the, the Ether Health platform for travelers, um, you've given that talk kind of as a practice before, essentially. Not yet, no. Uh, yet. The so the, in the final round, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The other ones I've already given, mm-hmm. but this one, we just make sure that this idea is good to be there okay. and like to talk about it, but I haven't. And what's the, like, the length? Present. Do you have a. a seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, that's, yes. that's good because that's normally. I think they can give you up to 18 minutes, but seven, I, th- I, I prefer shorter. So I think seven minutes is better. Mm-hmm. Um, True. I think, yeah, if, if you could bring the message abroad in a shorter length, it's more important. If it's go to the longer length, I have to go to technical details. And I don't think like everybody who's in the audience is from a technical background of mm-hmm. specialists in computer science. Yeah. So, yeah. so if, if, I, if, if you like suddenly you, go, you become unconscious now and you wake up on the 26th of March and then, um, uh, somebody is next to you go it's your turn to go on stage uh what would you do <laughs> would you- i think i will yeah um i think i will start with, with the story but mm-hmm. not make it too long try to have a story of why the idea came from and just try to s- tell the, the idea in as lame on terms as possible mm-hmm. uh, and I uh, would add some humor just to make the, the to break the ice of the audience. <laughs> that's yeah. that's all I know. <laughs> okay. So what what I think you know the way I, I approach this is it's always you pr- you get better through doing it. I think so. Um, mm-hmm. And and I'm going to give you homework as well between our coaching sessions. So um, by the time um, by the by the um, 26th of March, you're going to have done this talk 40 times. And so when you get up there, it'll be the 41st one and it will wow. be so easy because you, you'll have done it before. So, but um, since it's quite short, the talk, I think we can do it now if you would like. I'm going to start a timer and I'm going to give you seven minutes and we're going to go through that scenario. You wake up, you have to give the talk for real. Uh, you haven't been able to prepare because something happened mm-hmm. in the next two weeks. And and we're just going to yeah. see where, where it's at now. And then we're going to work from there because that's a good place to start. Is that good? Oh, sure. Is. Yeah, sure. Okay. I have never given the pitch at all. So I have that's to <laughs> just come up with it at the, on the spot. <laughs> so maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll give you a little bit less than seven minutes. I'll give you five minutes. And that way, um, um, anyway, we'll, we'll have some, something to work with. So. And I'll, I'll put the... Can I also have a timer here? Because I'm not sure yes. if I will... Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, I was going to put it on the screen, but... Um... Oh, sure. If it's on the screen, then it's better. I don't need to like keep changing. Yeah, I think uh, I'll just hold up my, my phone like this. So then we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you would get tired holding it for five, for five minutes, but sure, I don't mind it. <laughs> um, yeah, the other okay. way is for me to share my screen. Um, but... Um, let me see actually if I can do this. Um, oh yeah, Google has a pretty good time actually. I'm gonna use that. Make it nice and big. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Perfect, just the timer. Okay, so, ready? 
I think there are people here and I'm already nervous. No, but yes. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. All right. And three, two, one. Go. Can I ask one question before you start? Sure. Am I, uh, is it going to be like, I can imagine there is an audio sitting here, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be the audience. I'll be 300 people. Cool. <laughs> All right. And go. How many people are in this room have ever traveled in their life? Right. Um, as I assume, almost everyone. Um, and out of all of you, how many of you has ever uh, had a situation where they had to go to a hospital or they had had any health issues while they were abroad? Yeah, I see. There are some people. Well, that's the, that's the story of my life. And uh, I know many other people. Uh, but ours was a little bit more critical. Uh, my mom, she suffers from asthma, and uh, she sometimes gets attack, uh, lung attack, and she has to get treatment as soon as possible. But in some countries, they don't uh, sell asthma uh, medications just directly to you, and you have to go to the general physician. You have to make sure you actually suffer from the problem, then you can get the medication. And when we immigrated to Netherlands, that was the case for us. And my mom, she had to go to general physician more than four or five times, go through several screenings until they made sure she had an asthma and then they gave her the medication. But through this time, she suffers from several uh, asthma attacks and that was really dangerous for her. She almost uh, reached the point she was maybe pass passing away. So this was something that, that really hit me and I thought there should be a solution to this. Like there should be some sort of possibility when you travel abroad and, or maybe you're immigrating, people could have access to your health information, uh, some organizations like hospitals, and they could make sure that you're suffering from a problem before they have to screen you for the several times in their life. And that's why I came up with this, uh, with a solution to this. So I thought there should be a platform, a health platform online that organizations from all around the world could have access to it, to the data that you would like to share. You have a uh, right uh, of access to all of your data and you would, uh, you, you could like, if you would like, you could share it with the people and uh, the organizations. Okay, I'm not sure how, how, I'm not prepared for the technical details, but uh, what I wish was to make sure that these data can't be replicated or you can't insert false data. So only certain uh, authorities uh, that have, sorry, certain organizations that have the authority to insert the data or remove data could do that. Or if you want some of your data to be removed, you have to ask for permission. So these data, even though they are yours, but you cannot edit them or make changes as you want to them. So definitely your data, has to be based on truth and based on uh, real health facts. But the whole goal is that, uh, that you could let the people know your health issues without you having to go through several times of screenings and going to different general physicians and uh, maybe even in some cases going to a specialist to help you out, uh, making sure that you have a sickness or a problem. Can I stop here? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, so <laughs> Sorry. Got, no, that's good. You, you've got three and a half minutes. That, mean, that means you've got half the length, although I guess they won't mind if you go short. Um, but probably for impact, you, you probably want to use a little bit more time. But that's, that's fine. So I'm going to give you some input now about how to, how to move forward with that. So um, Thank you. But this was, I think, the most awful presentation I've ever <laughs> given in my life. <laughs> Well, <laughs> zero preparation and exactly like, that was really I'm, bad. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you some presentation that I have. So, um, so one of the core things that I teach people is uh, what's called the three X structure. Maybe you've heard of this before. Mm -hmm. um, it's something very basic uh, that they teach to writers, playwrights, especially screenwriters. Um, but it's also I've found it very very useful for uh, doing these kind of t TEDx talks. Um, because mm -hmm. the TEDx format is narrative, there's a story behind it, and um, and it's it's relatively short, but in a in a 
few minutes, you can actually go through a narrative structure like this. And um, when you do it like that, it uh, comes, come, becomes quite effective. So the, the way that it works, this 3x structure, is um, we, we can start at the end, which is the, um, we call it the payoff or the resolution. Mm -hmm. And um, the resolution is really about, uh, well, a, a big part of it is your message. At the very end, you know, when you, when you think about a movie or you think about a talk, there's something you remember. There's like a message, right? You can probably summarize mm -hmm. it in one sentence. What's the point of that thing? And that thing, that point goes at the end, usually. Um, it, it, mm -hmm. Maybe it's mentioned earlier on, but at the end, it's when you really underline it and you, you, you emphasize it and it becomes really, really clear to your audience uh, what your message is. So um, for you, the message is, I guess something like we should have this e-health platform that allows you to share data. Okay, so we can clarify exactly how to make that and get that really across in your communication. But uh, that's your message, right? Now, at the beginning, um, the setup, the context is how do we get your audience to actually follow this journey with you? So you have to make it relevant to them. Now, what you did, those asking those two questions, is a way of doing that. Um, I think it can be better as well. So we, we can talk about how to how to really get people on board and to create some context. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's you know relatively easy. The hardest part is the middle, <laughs> the climax, True. the conflict. The, uh, you can also call it the tension. This is the part where um, you want to create make something, yeah, create tension to 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 kind of draw the spring out, and then when you let go, it claps together, and you really make an impact with what you're doing with what you're saying. So. Uh, if you notice, when you think about it, um, most movies that, that you like or really enjoy, the movies that you love the most, probably in, involve life or death situations. Think about that for a moment. What is your favorite movie? Maybe, maybe tell me, what's your, what's your favorite movie? Yeah, maybe Inception. Inception, okay. <laughs> um, well, well, yeah, Inception, uh, almost everybody is at some point almost going to die, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> At the end, it's not clear if he's going to die because, or if he's actually not woken up yet. But these are uh, most movies, if they're re really great movies, really love those movies, they're about life and death situations. Why is that? Mm -hmm. It's not because like everyday life is full of life and death situations. No, it's because um, they, they are trying to make an impact. They're trying to bring a message across. And the best way to do that is to create as much emotional tension as possible. And one of the most Th things that has the greatest tension is life and death, right? Now, True. for that yes. also, you have a pretty good place because you're talking about the life and death situation that your mother was in uh, when, when she doesn't have the solution that you're talking about. So that's great. That's, that's a tension that you want to create. Um, maybe there's some other things that, that can help to create that tension as well. Uh, we can figure that out. But this is um, the structure that I want you to keep in mind that, you, mm -hmm. that you're going to put that talk into. Now, people, sure, can, sounds great. people disagree about um, the beginning. Should you, should you say something really surprising at the beginning to wake people up? Mm. Uh, depends, right? So if you are on a stage where there's uh, 20 other people before you and 20 other people after you, I mean, it's too, too dense and people will forget you if, if you don't, yeah. or people won't even begin to pay attention. You know, everybody will be on the phone checking something. And then uh, when you come and talk, if it, you're not making like a really big impact from the beginning, people's attention mm. is not there. So some people say you should start with a bang. You should start with something really powerful. However, if people have the attention already, and there's also different ways to create that. So for example, if you go on stage, take a deep breath, look people in the eye and wait for 10 seconds, 20 seconds. That feels like a really long time when you're on stage. <laughs> but it's a way to create uh, attention. So when people notice that something, someone has walked on stage, there's not, no sound anymore. The person is looking at everybody. Suddenly, the audience will start to get quieter. Even though there's space, you might expect them to get louder, but actually, they will get quieter. And, and then when you have their attention, then you can start very softly. You don't need to make a big bang. You can start with something very subtle, something that they all agree with. That's kind of a good place to start. Because if, something, if you say something that everybody already agrees with, then suddenly, you've got them on board. You've got them coming along mm. the story with you. Nice. I'm taking notes as as, as we as you're explaining. Great. So <laughs> that was just um, so something that I wanted to show you. These these this three act structure. That's that's kind of the core of what I teach most people. Um, because when 
when you can do a good three act structure, it it really will will the idea will really come across to people. Um, yes. So let's see. Now we've gone for about twenty minutes. Um, I might get you to spend. Um, I mean, one, one of the things that you need to work on is, is actually the solution. How do you present that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it seems to me that that's not entirely clear yet. Um, but how do you feel about that? How, what's, what's the way that you're going to move forward with describing the solution? That's a good question. Um, I think I have like a maybe 200 word explanation of my idea, right? I've written down, it, I've written mm -hmm. it down in the notes before. Yeah. Um, it's, it's about, but it's, it's full of a lot of technical details that I've thought about, like the corner cases and the edge situations where something might go wrong and that's what you don't want. Mm -hmm. But trying to make the simple idea stand out, I think is also very important. Like, uh, like, that's why I was keep repeating the basic sentence in that my three minute pitch about what I want to do with the EL, but I was too afraid to go to any technical details. But I think I have to find a middle ground between here, like yeah. not say so many technical details, but at least say what makes it stand out and what makes yeah. it safe. Very importantly, like people's data should be safe. It has to like remain correct, something like that. Yeah, so, so I, um, I would suggest actually that you outline those goals you more than outlining the technical details you need to outline the goals what are the goals it needs to be safe um it needs to um be, be accurate and you know probably you can outline some principles or goals like that that your system needs to achieve and so what you mm -hmm. can do is you can you know set up the, the the why this is important and then you can say so if if this is important we decide to do that well what's important about that what are the principles we need to keep in mind and then you can mention some of the technology that makes that possible um, mm -hmm. and maybe you know what one, one way one thing that you might also want to mention is you know maybe some of the technology is only possible now you know maybe you can say well we would love to have had the system 20 years ago but 20 years ago we didn't have the technology to do this but today exactly. with blockchain and with that and this the technology is available to actually fulfill all of these needs that we have Yes. And with the story, oh, sorry, oh, I'm listening. I was just finding the note, but yes, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Um, you, uh, one thing that I think you need to work on a little bit is making this this whole thing. Um, making it a, a bit clearer about why it's important. One of the questions that comes up to me is, well, I, like you, I travel a lot. <laughs> and so for me, this would be interesting. But uh, some people might think to themselves, yeah, but I go on holiday for one week and then I come back. I don't need to, ha to have my data everywhere. Usually I, I'm not going to, you know, suddenly get sick or something in a different country and then be, be stuck. Like usually also if you're sick, if you're traveling within Europe, you know, if you go to, to, to if, you, if it's really an emergency, then it doesn't, you know, they, they will have to figure it out anyway. And if it's not really an emergency, you can just go home to get treated by your doctor. So why, why is this really important? And I mean, you mentioned before, I think as well, that this is something the European Union wants to actually push. So maybe that's something that you can mention that this is actually a, a European uh, initiative that they want to push something like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. What are some of the other reasons that you can think of why this is, this is, you know, universally, universally applicable and not, and not just something that's interesting for you and me, you know? Sure. So I think, oh uh, yeah, universally. Hmm. So sometimes uh, in some countries, maybe developing countries, you cannot get a treatment in your own country and you have to go abroad. Um, mm -hmm. 
to get a treatment. So that mm -hmm. could be useful for all those people who have to do a treatment abroad because it's not in the country they, re mm -hmm. they reside. Mm -hmm. The second thing is for all the people who have who have to or they want to migrate from a country to another country, then you have a lot of medical data that you have to um, explain from zero to mm -hmm. in the new country. Like for us, it took maybe two or three months of each me and my parents have to go to general physician several times because they only give you maybe a few minutes every session to yeah. explain some of your problems. And if you have a lot of problems, for example, like my mom, she has backache, a knee problem, asthma, this and that, it takes a very long time to tell all these things and they have to do a lot of screening. So for people who migrate, it's, I think it's going to be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, for everyone who travels, then they could make sure in the case that they are in an accident situation uh, that they are unconscious or they are not injured or something. At least the country they are in, they have access to the data. Without them, maybe they're not even able to explain it in the language of the country they're going to. Mm -hmm. they, they're brought to the hospital, they can't even explain it. But if the data is written in in the system and it's translated in the language of all the countries, then at least all those data mm -hmm. is accessible, no matter if they can explain it or not. Yeah. So, and most so, of the people are also not able to explain their problem very well, in, even in the language they're good at. Like they don't know it in, a, in, a, in a, anatomy or, or um, medical terms. We don't know it or we're not good at explaining it. Yeah. So sometimes there's going to be a lot of misinformation when you have to explain it to a new doctor. What, what are the most common types of accidents? I guess car accidents, right? Probably. Yeah, car accidents, yeah. That, that maybe, would happen. maybe you could do a little bit of research about... Um, complications with car accidents and other problems that might be um might, might require information you know because the typical car accident somebody gets into an accident they get rushed to an emergency room they get treated i mean there's not the, the emergency room doctors usually don't need to know anything about you to be able to treat you unless you have an allergy to medicine in which case you have yeah, a problem exactly. but, but if you have an allergy to to, to medicine then um, well, some people who have that, who have really serious allergies to medicine, they also carry that on a bracelet or something like that on an on a, on a, you know, emergency bracelet so that people will know. Um, and that's a pretty, that's a pretty small use case. So I, I wonder if you can find a use case that's going to, that's more likely to happen to like the average traveler, because I think mm -hmm. probably, you know, the audience that you're going to be talking to, you know, most of them won't be able to uh, um, relate to the idea of migrating to another country. I don't know mm -hmm. what the percentage will be. Maybe it's 5%, maybe it's 15%, but certainly more than half of the people will never migrate to another country. Mm -hmm. And, and um, the other use case of doing traveling for medical purposes, that's, I guess in the Netherlands, not really a, um, a big thing. So, so that last one, the, having an accident while you're on holiday, I think that's something that most people will be able to relate to. And you just need to figure out exactly what is it about that um, mm. that makes your solution required, and not just in the edge cases, not just, just in case you have an allergy or, you know, which most people don't. So how, when is it useful to, to most people in your audience? Very true. I have to make a res do a research on that. If you can't do that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't make it hopeless. You have to um, make a moral argument. Like, why should they care about other people's problems? <laughs> okay? mm, true, true. Yeah. Other otherwise, you, you, you people will not care. So that's, that's, you, you, this is a question that also is very useful to ask yourself. Why should people care? And, and they will either care because it affects them or because you show them, uh, like, if I'm a good person, I should care about other people's problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I think I'm gonna need, I need to do a combination of both. Yeah. Because uh, in one hand, uh, this could be useful for a lot of Dutch people, but there are a lot of other people who might, this might be a lot more useful for them. Yep. So I want to also raise awareness in some way that, yes. this, that it's going to be useful for a lot of people, even though you might not need it right now or in the future. That's great. But, so yeah. there's a few different ways you can do that. One is, uh, sh show some statistics, show some numbers. If you show that, you know, what's the, what, what, how many people have allergies, you know, that, that might be dangerous for, mm. for some accident situations. What's the, you know, find those numbers and, and the best way to do it, of course, is to do it in raw numbers. If you say there is 5 million people in Europe who are allergic to medicine, these people are, will be in really a lot of trouble yeah. if they get an accident when they are, are traveling. This is, this is a, you, when you say that 5 million people have the problem, oh, shit, the other way is 
Um, I was thinking of something else. Now it's gone, but certainly statistics is is is, is, a, is a good one. Oh yeah, yeah. The other thing I wanted to say was about um, to make it a stronger moral argument. You can talk about how people who uh, this will be useful for are anyway disadvantaged by society, right? Mm. So these are people who have already some dangerous allergy that makes it hard for them to get medical care in general. Uh, maybe they have more illnesses also. Um, so these are people that actually deserve our um, protection uh, you know, in society. Because we say, in our society, we say, we want to make sure we take care of the weak um, and those people who, 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 who have you know, suffer more of uh, life's injustices, um, which is, you know, I mean, we, we all, everybody yes. gets dealt a random hand at birth, uh, how much um, illness you have and how much, you know, what's your, these, mm -hmm. these are all things that we can't, we can't usually, you know, or for most, for, for the most part, we can't influence how often we're going to get sick and these things. And that's not, not really fair, but that's how the world is. And so um, if there's a group of people who are more likely to get sick, then as a society, mm. we should figure out how to help those people. Very good point. So I heard like there should be, not should be, but it's advice to have that one very important sentence at the very end of your talk that uh, that will be like what what the people remembered like the take home message I think yeah. it should be something like maybe in the sense of let's make the world a fair fairer place or more fair place even for the people who are already in disadvantage absolutely so, you know, now yeah. a sentence like, that's great because now you you figured out that that is going to apply to everybody everybody's going to go yes that's what what i i want right yeah. now that's something even you know that you could put very early in the beginning of your talk you know, because that's something that everybody can agree with. Do we want to make the world a fair place? Yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> so that's a, a place where you can get agreement from everybody. At the end, that's, um, I wouldn't say that's what you necessarily want people to remember from your talk. It's an argument. It's what you, want, what you, what you, what you say to convince people that what, you, what you've said is, is true and important. But what you want people to remember is that we should build this platform, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I've seen that actually. I've seen a lot of TED Talks where they end on something very vague, like "let's make the world a you know better place," and it's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like I don't remember yeah, the difference, be, yeah, <laughs> between that TED Talk and any other TED Talk. So I don't know, I don't know who, what that person was talking about, and it, that's that's sad because then actually I forgot the main message, what that person was saying. <laughs> um, so. Be careful with that because it's, it's tempting because it's like, oh, yeah, everybody can agree with that. But that's not necessarily what you want to end with. You want to end with something that's actually surprising, maybe. That's why if we go back mm -hmm. to that 3x structure model, you know, context, like what people can agree with, that's the beginning. But at the end, it's a resolution. And um, one way to think about that as well is um, when you create all that tension in the middle, you're saying, we have this problem, we have that problem, we have this problem, we have that problem. And they say, but I have a solution. And here's the solution. <laughs> Ta-da. This is the. Uh, <laughs> oh God, this laptop. I have just recently damaged my laptop so bad I had to give it for repair. So I have a very old laptop it's very slow very sluggish and has a lot of problems <laughs> just trying to get used to typing on this very old laptop and i type and after a few seconds the, the letters appear <laughs> oh my god wow okay. <laughs> it's very bad. so yeah. um you've got a lot of things to work on <laughs> yeah i know like it's it's very bad sorry that i interrupted your sentence no. like the other talk I, I had at least practiced several times i've given yes. the pitch like, i had the slides and everything this yeah. one, the decision, like the day that I texted you that I and I need that I need your help and everything. That was the day that they confirmed this is a good idea. Work on this. But okay. since then, I've been working on like deadlines, and yeah. did not have time to spend anything at all on this one. So that's why I was so unprepared and it went so bad. Yeah. So you just need to like need to prioritize 
like uh, how, how you do that. So one, I would not script the talk. To me, this is a waste of time uh, because mm-hmm. I'll ex- I will tell you why. Um, most people, this is really counterintuitive. Most people would say, yeah, first you write it and then you practice it, right? But the, the, this, the reason it's not a good idea is because the way you write and the way you speak are totally different, okay? So Very true. Um, I used to, when I was a teenager, I used to want to be a screenwriter and a director, a film director. And um, what I realized was that I sucked at doing that, <laughs> sucked at writing, screenwriting, because um, I couldn't write dialogue. Like I could write, you know, what's going on, but I couldn't write the conversations. Mm-hmm. And film is like mostly dialogue. Like if you look at yeah, a script, yeah. script of, a, of a film, it's, it's mostly dialogue. And then I started looking at, you know, scripts that I loved, movies that I loved. I looked at the, at the, uh, the screenplays. And when I read the dialogue, I thought, this sounds really stupid. Like, it sounds like it was really dumbed down the way that they wrote that. And at some point, I realized, mm. no, it's not dumbed down. It's just that speaking is really, really different from writing. So when you read a written text, you expect it to be, you know, full sentences. And you expect it to be uh, clear and logical, the way that the sentence structures are built up. You, you expect things to be in paragraphs. But when we speak, uh-huh. we don't expect any of that. Sentences are half finished. Um, there's single words sometimes, there's uh, interjections and interruptions and all sorts of stuff. And if you look at a screenplay, this is all written in, you know, it'll say exactly yeah. what word the person will interrupt. And yeah, yeah. it's kind of confusing and it kind of makes it unclear, but actually that's how, how spoken word is. It's, it's, it's like that. And if you, if you don't do that, if you don't make it interrupted and single words and sentences that don't really complete, if you don't do that, what you will have at the end is something that sounds like you are reading or it mm. will sound like you are overly formal, that you're, you have a stick up your back, that you're, that you're not authentic. And so mm-hmm. if you want to appear authentic, and especially for TEDx talks, that's quite really important, you need to forget about the script, don't write it, just uh, practice by speaking it, you know, have bullet points, of course, about your talk have the bullet points but then you practice and the words every time you do it will be slightly different that doesn't matter because that way it will stay real and it will stay authentic so and i say i say to people if you are an experienced screenwriter fine <laughs> you could write it but most people don't have that otherwise, experience, don't have that expertise yeah. so don't write it otherwise you will make it worse actually it's just my experience but it gets worse when you try to write it word for word so so write the bullet points of the important things. Mm-hmm. Also, you can, you know, little short phrases where you find like, this is a really powerful phrase. You can write the mm-hmm. phrase, but otherwise just write keywords, bullet points um, about the things you want to say. Also the stories, you know, you, rather than bullet points. Um, and so, uh, and the other thing I'm, I want to say about your, what, you, what you're going to do now in the next few days until the next call is, you know, obviously there's a few details you have to fill in about the, mm-hmm. um, the statistics maybe and maybe the, a little bit about the the system how it will work but i would say like really time box it you know give yourself 10 minutes to find a statistic give yourself 10 minutes to you know add a couple okay. of details and don't spend more mm. than that i mean you can always fill more of that in later when you feel like you need it but uh, especially because you're quite time constrained don't spend too much time on that otherwise what happens and this ha- happens with a lot of people also that i coach and that makes me really sad is that they will have everything prepared and then two days before they're like okay now i can start practicing it's like no that's too late you need to start practicing now so um if you're going to spend 20 minutes on doing a couple of more things then spend uh, 20 minutes doing the talk three times in a row okay Um, and that means you set a timer you uh start a timer you put put on put a video camera on you know your phone or or your laptop whatever um and do the talk recording it Mm -hmm. then press stop press delete, you know, start recording again. <laughs> the point is not yeah, about yeah. The recording. Uh, sometimes it's useful, but not, you don't need to watch every single recording. Um, uh, just do it three times in a row. Just do it back to back, the same thing three times in a row and, and just notice what, what sticks, what you like about it, what you don't like, you know? And then afterwards mm-hmm. you can take some notes. Maybe you could watch the last one and see if there's something that you can see that, you know, it's useful. But uh, I would spend most of your time actually talking to the camera and okay. you know, spend maybe half as much time um, actually taking notes and thinking about the structure and how you can do all those things, you know, including all of the feedback I've given you about structure and stuff like that. Just don't don't overthink that because otherwise, again, at the end, what you're creating is you'll create uh, you know some some written piece that makes sense on paper, but it doesn't make sense when you're speaking it. So yeah, that's I agree. I, 
keep keep saying it, keep keep speaking it, and then it'll get better um, as as a speech and not as a as a piece of other content. Understood, sure, and I agree with that. I also like never write down my presentations on the paper because I know it's going to be very different when I talk it out loud. Yeah, so, yeah, great. Okay, so I, I'm going to let you go now. And um, if you have time now, you know, it might be, might be a good place to do a little bit of that research and do a couple of practice runs. Um, mm -hmm. If you want, uh, you know, send me the last recording as well. Um, and we'll find the time for the next, for the next coaching. And then uh, we'll go from there. Is that cool? Sure. Sounds amazing. Okay, great. Well, yes. yeah, have a good, uh, good day. And, uh, and see you next time. <laughs> Thank you. See you next time.